good morning everybody we have an opportunity again to sing his praise to honor and worship the king through music he is the one who has humbled himself help us jesus to humble ourselves before you today amen <laughs> We 
walk by your spirit Lord and help us Jesus to be like you in all things reconcilers peacemakers promise keepers thank you Jesus for your spirit among us amen good morning and welcome this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we continue our Lenten journey, today we observe the fourth Sunday in Lent. As we continue our time of reflection and repentance and rejoicing in the forgiveness, life, and salvation that God gives to us through Christ our Savior. Today we consider how we have an opportunity and a responsibility 
to bring that good news of healing and hope, of forgiveness and peace in Christ to all the world. For St. Paul reminds us that we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal to others through us. May God bless our worship to strengthen our faith that our lives of faith may be a witness to the world around us of the good news of God's love in Christ our Savior. We begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak responsibly Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely, in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. 
But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf, and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants, and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat, that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's object lesson comes from Luke 15 in the parable of the lost son. Sometimes when we hear that, we forget that there's two sons in that story. There's the son that left with a lot of his worldly materials and then squandered them, decided to come back home. Then there's the other son who never left home, who had all the blessings and just stayed there. And when his brother returned and his father got excited, he got a little angry because he didn't think he was being treated the same. And the father had to turn and tell him, you've always been here. You've had it all. You have always had the blessings that I've wanted to bestow upon you. Your brother didn't. And now he's come home and I want to give him the same blessings that I give you. How we look at those blessings, that's up to us. That's our reaction, that's our choice. But we have those blessings, whether we're a lifetime Christian or a new Christian or a fairly new Christian. We have God's blessings regardless. He wants to bestow those blessings upon us. He gets excited when we're there for him and he just wants all of us to join him in heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, whether we're a lifetime Christian or a new Christian or somewhere in between, you bless us. You graciously bless us and want to bless us. And we thank you for that. And we are grateful for that. We ask that you continue to bless us, continue to hold us tightly within your arms until one day we meet you face to face. In Jesus' name, amen. We declare our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, God's in the business of making all things new, and we too must look at each other with those eyes of Christ, instead of with a pointed finger, but rather knowing that we're all works in progress, but by his promise, we are being renewed in the spirit. This is Beautiful Things. Your story is a story of transformation from glory to glory, Lord. We are being made in your likeness. Please continue to work on us. Oh, open our hearts that we might want to be changed by you. 
and change us by your word as we hear it today. All God's people said, Amen. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Dearly loved and precious children of God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is our second lesson from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 with particular focus on verse 20, which reads, We are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. This is our text. The role of an ambassador is an important one. And the role of ambassador is not nearly as uncommon as we might expect. We know that nations of the world appoint diplomatic ambassadors to represent them in other nations. But colleges and universities also have ambassadors. Many high schools have student ambassadors. And today there are a growing number of corporations that make use of brand ambassadors who generate interest in products and services in order to increase revenue for their companies. The concept of an ambassador is nothing new. Their role was recognized in the ancient world. And it's not surprising that we find reference to them in the Bible as well. St. Paul used the image of the ambassador twice in his letters. Once here in our text and another time in his letter to the Ephesian Christians when he asked the Ephesians to pray that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador. We have no difficulty seeing the Apostle Paul with his influential role as a missionary, preacher, teacher, and church planter, also being an ambassador of the gospel in all of the various places he traveled and went for Christ. But what is truly amazing is that Paul, writing by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, made the following incredible declaration of all of us as God's people. Paul wrote, we, you and I, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. Wow. So, congratulations. 
you hold a title you didn't know that you had. You fill a role you didn't realize was given to you. When I speak with you now, I can appropriately begin by addressing you as ambassador. Now, please don't misunderstand. I'm not trying to be silly. I'm trying to make a point. And the point is not mine, but that of St. Paul's. And the point is we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal to all the world through us. Every Christian is an ambassador for Christ. Every one of us has been entrusted with a message, the message of reconciliation. God reconciling sinful people back to himself. God bringing people who have fallen from him back into a relationship with him by grace through Christ. Paul wrote, all this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. That message of reconciliation is the gospel, the message about Christ and his work of salvation on our behalf. The sinless Son of God, the one who knew no sin, was made to be sin before God as he took our sins upon himself on the cross of Calvary. Christ on the cross became saturated with our sin. He bore the full weight of our punishment that we deserve by our sin and rebellion. He bore the full weight of God's justice against sinful humanity and evil people. God was in Christ accomplishing the great exchange. The sinless Son of God became sin for us. And the pure righteousness of Christ is given to us as a gift of God's grace through faith in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the message of the gospel. And God is entrusting to us this message the message of reconciliation. Therefore, Paul declared, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. God has called us and cleansed us. He has made us holy and righteous in Christ. And by his grace, through his Spirit, God commissions and empowers us to be ambassadors for Christ. And that means that by our daily faith and life, by our words and our witness, God brings his loving appeal to others so that others may find in Christ healing and hope, forgiveness and peace in the God of all grace, who in Christ reconciles us to himself in love. Being an ambassador is serious business. Certainly, if one is representing their nation as an ambassador, certainly also if one is representing one's school or the company whose products and services one testifies to. If being an ambassador in earthly matters is an important responsibility, how much more important is it for us to take seriously 
the spiritual and eternal nature of our role as ambassadors for Christ to the world around us. It requires taking seriously the commission we have been given and the role we fill in all of our relationships and interactions with others. It requires of us diplomacy and tact, wisdom and discernment, patience and prudence. But the truth is that in Christ and by his power, we are ready and able in his spirit to fulfill our calling. Wherever we may go, wherever we may be, whatever activities or conversations we're engaged in, the Lord our God is with us. And Christ in us and for us and his word and spirit empowering and guiding us, with joy and confidence we live and serve and witness as ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal to us, to others, be reconciled to God. May the light of Christ, with the forgiveness, healing, and hope it brings, the peace and joy that comes with it, shine through our lives so that others may see and know the God who loves them in Christ. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. There's a song that reminds us that we uh, are reconciled to God when we uh, receive Christ. Um, apart from Christ, we, we are actually at enmity, or in other words, we're opposed. We're enemies of God, the Bible says. So, so many human philosophies say that we're good. We're good with ourselves. We're good people. We're, we're inherently good, and we're... If there is a God that we, we must be received and accepted by him because we think we're good. But the fact is, according to the scripture, we fall short of the glory of God. We have a sin nature and we need to be reconciled to God because we're opposed to him. And there's a gap between us. Jesus Christ bridged that gap by his cross. Thank you so much, Jesus. This is a song that helps us remember all that he's done. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. To the cross I love To the cross I cling Of its suffering I do drink Of its work I do that God is love and God is just yeah at the cross you beckon me draw me gently to my knees and I lost for words so lost in love I'm sweetly broke Draw me out of the light And I 
was under your red Down through the cross I'm reconciled Thank you for the cross, yeah The cross you beckon me And draw me gently To my knees and I am lost for words so Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. Give us a right understanding of the evil we have done. Move us to confess our sins and justify us by your grace for the sake of your sinless Son who bore all our sins on the cross, that we might be robed in his righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, fill the hearts of your people in all their various callings with the joy of your salvation, that they may make it known in all the earth and live as ambassadors for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in Christ you were reconciling the world to yourself. Watch over our nation and all whom you have placed in authority. Give them wisdom and discernment that your people might live in peace and freely make known the message of reconciliation in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember our world, O Lord, and bring peace among nations. Grant the comfort of your presence to those who are suffering the ravages of conflict and war, those who are fleeing for refuge, and all victims of violence and oppression. Lead them to find in you a strong refuge in their present time of need, and assure hope 
for their future in your kingdom. Thwart all evil plans and break the oppressive will that undermines your justice for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of all who cry out to you for mercy, healing, and help, including Kennedy Bicker, Holland Buell, and Roger Oberg, who are facing challenges in health. Deliver them according to your will, Restore them to fullness of health and strength. And as you have made them a new creation in Christ, keep them mindful of the day when sorrow and sickness will be no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray with joy and thanksgiving for the more than 30 years of ministry and service which Mr. and Mrs. John and Ruth Heinitz invested in the mission of Zion, most significantly through Zion Lutheran School, but also through their service and leadership in the congregation of Zion. We thank you, Lord, for their loving and caring teaching ministry, their leadership in school and church, and for the joys of being family together with them at Zion as they raise their family of three daughters in this blessed place. Be with them and watch over them in their new home and community, and give them every needed grace and blessing as they serve you in North Carolina. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, it's that time again to sing our closing song as we give him the glory. He is helping us grow. And he deserves all praise. Here we go. My friends may go. Bless you all. Enjoy your week. Praise Jesus. Amen.